Now here's a big name, but probably not the version that you think of when it comes to Parodius. Parodius is a game that's going to make shoot 'em up fans of a certain age go, oh boy, and everyone else go, what? I expect that my audience is distinguished enough to be able to recite the entire list of Parodius games, but just in case, the series started life as an internal parody of Konami's Gradius. That first version was released to MSX computers, and that proved so popular that Konami made an arcade version. That first arcade game is Parodius Da. Parodius Da was ported to just about everything under the sun, including, obviously, the Famicom. The arcade game was only about six months old when the Famicom version was released, so this was a very hasty port. And unfortunately, it kind of shows. The plot of the game is that the Great Octopus is attacking the Earth, and that's why the greatest space fighters in the universe fly out to stop him. When you start the game, you're immediately given an important choice. Which of the four characters do you want to play as? The Vic Viper has a loadout similar to the first Gradius game. Missiles that chase the ground, a twin shot that fires up, and a forward-firing laser. The Octopus's weapon set is very similar to what the Vic Viper had in Salamander. Rather than missiles, it has a split fire, it can fire bullets to the rear, and it has a ripple laser that can cover a large area. Twin B's weapons are, as you would expect, very similar to what you'd get in Twin B. Rather than missiles, it fires fists straight forward. There's a rear shot, and rather than a laser, you have a triple spread. Finally, Pintaro the Penguin's options are very similar to one of the sets you could find in Gradius 2. An explosion on the ground, and its forward cannon can also become an explosion. There's really only two types of shields, though they are themed around each character. There's the forward shields that the Vic Viper and the Octopus have, and the surrounding shields that Twin B and Pintaro have. One of the things I noticed in Parodius Da is that the shields are not very useful. They're large enough that they collide with terrain very easily, and that always counts as a hit, so they drain away very rapidly when you're going through tight areas. The shields are still good to have, they're just not nearly as powerful as they have been in previous games. Just like in the Gradius game, you get power-ups by collecting capsules. When you start out, you can choose if you want the game to automatically upgrade you, or if you want to do it yourself. And you'll probably always want to do it yourself since working out what you want to prioritize is a big part of building up. One new twist to the capsules is that some of the ones that you pick up will start a roulette with your power bar. Until you hit the button to activate an ability, power capsules that you collect won't do anything. The real risk with the roulette is hitting the exclamation point question mark square. When you activate that, whether by roulette or for some weird reason hitting it yourself, it resets you back to no power-ups. And since the roulette has to activate something, it is depressingly common for you to lose everything when you accidentally collect one. You also lose all of your power-ups when you die, and in some places where that happens, it's virtually impossible to go on. Konami also brought over the bells from Twin B. These will sometimes emerge from enemies when you defeat them, and they cycle through colors as you shoot the bells. Gold, which is the color they'll be most of the time, is just points. The blue bell kills all enemies on the screen when you get it. The red bell gives you three special bombs that put up a wall in front of you. You can't fire a second one until the first one scrolls off the screen. The flashing bell makes you invincible and grow to giant size. You can't shoot in this form, but you can ram enemies and damage them very quickly. Finally, the white bell gives you a 1-up. You're given three lives to start with, but you have unlimited continues. Though again, that's not as helpful as it sounds, since it just will result in you pounding your head against nearly impossible odds. Parodius Da has seven stages, or at least seven normal stages. The Famicom version has three additional stages that you can access if you fulfill special conditions. Unfortunately, I couldn't get them to work for me, so I'm not able to show those off. The game is extremely difficult, in my hour of play, I kept getting stuck at the fourth stage and then not being able to continue onward. And there aren't even any cheat codes to get you ahead. The first stage is themed as an island in the ocean, and you'll encounter a mid-boss that's a flying cat pirate ship thing. You can shoot off a lot of its parts. One thing about Parodius Dot is that a lot of the mid-bosses aren't things that you destroy, they're things that you endure. And in the case of the cat, if you destroy a lot of it fast, 
you're just going to have to wait around until it goes away. The boss of the first stage is this pirate penguin. He spits out mini penguins that spin around him, and you just have to shoot his belly button. The second stage seems to have a carnival theme. It's the point where you'll really start getting overwhelmed by quantities of enemies. The mid-boss here is quite controversial. It's an early example of Nintendo censoring games in Japan for their content. In the original arcade version, she's dressed as a dancer for Carnival in Brazil. Nintendo required that Konami change her, and so on the Famicom version, she is dressed in a suit. The boss of the third stage is this eagle that can fire a spread of feathers. It's actually pretty easy, even if you aren't invincible like I am. The third stage steps up to a full amusement park. I had a bit of trouble on this one because some of the terrain that you can collide with looks just like it's the background. The mid-boss is this swinging ship. The big catch is the first time that you get here, you're not going to know what you're doing. And that gap at the top of the screen that you have to fly over to get between the two Moai heads doesn't show up on my television. The boss of this stage is this duck guy. I'm not sure what his deal is. The fourth stage replicates some of the high-speed stages from earlier games, and this is where if you die and don't have a speed power-up, you're probably going to keep dying. It's technically possible to get through, but it's really unpleasant. I think by this point you might have identified the key problem in Parodius Da. The game is a flickery mess, almost to the point of being unplayable. It's hard to see the action on screen a lot of the time. And in a fast-paced shoot-'em-up, that is a pretty big problem. In Japan, the view on the Famicom port is play any other version, including the Game Boy version that came out a few months after. It's regarded as a bottom-tier port of one of the better shoot-'em-ups. I remember I was really excited to get this cartridge when I purchased my first proper bundle of Famicom games. A whole 500 yen at Book Off. And then I played it. This is the end of the line for this type of Gradius-style shooter on the Famicom, and unfortunately it goes out with a bit of a whimper.